second grade. Ooh, it's another day of fractions and I am very excited. We're gonna do a few things to get prepped for our learning today. The first thing I want you to do is in front of you, you have your rectangles if you're in class and if you don't are not in class, you're gonna to wanna to collect uh, one, two, three pieces of rec just pieces of paper. So they can be construction paper, they can be line paper, whichever you choose. Here at school, you've got what you need. And you also should have um, a paper that has your circle left over from yesterday. Take a peek at our um, public record from yesterday and you can see that we have our circle. So I want you in the first few minutes as we kind of get ready for everybody to come to the carpet, take a moment and trace and cut your circle with your traceable. And we'll be ready to go in just a few moments. And if you're not sure, Watch Miss Baker do that while you're getting started so that you can easy peasy camp and easy um, divide this circle into some parts today. Woo! Flying papers. And you'll get that cut out right away and then it'll be ready to go for when you do your fractions today. You've got 30 more seconds because you guys have already started while I've been talking. Awesome. And scraps can just go at the top of your workspace or to the side so that you're not wasting your learning time to do those. All right, thumbs in front of your tummies when you're ready to go. At home, if you need to pause me, please go ahead and pause me. And we're going to get started with our target. Let's see what we're going to divide up today. I can partition a circle and rectangle into three equal parts. Oh, there's that word partition again. Remember when we're partitioning, we're breaking something up into parts. You can see that little chunk of that word that helps us understand what that word means. Remember that circle is that never ending curved line. And our rectangle, make those with your hands again. Yes, there's our rectangle. And remember, it could be a square. Right? So you're gonna see in your independent practice, there's gonna be some squares in there. Those are rectangles too, right? So a square can be a rectangle, remember from our learning last week, but a rectangle can't be a square, okay? So we could see some squares that you have to divide up too. We're gonna divide them up into three equal parts. And when we say equal, what does that mean? Everybody tell me the same yes those parts will be the same the same size the same shape and if we take a peek from our work from yesterday we can see two of the same shape here two of the same shape here two of the same shape here and two of the same shape here now is this shape the same as this one is this shape the same as this one? No. Is this shape the same as this one? No. That's a whole, that's a circle. My goodness. So our shapes might not be the same when we divide them different ways, but when we divide them, the two parts of that whole are the same. So these two pieces have to be the same, but we might divide them in different ways and we may see some different shapes coming about. Now our work today is tricky, okay? To divide something up into three equal parts is not easy. In fact, it takes some very careful work. So I'm, we're gonna walk through that and do that together today. So I'm gonna start out asking you, what do you notice about this shape? Is it partitioned? It's not, it is a what? It's a whole, everybody say whole and I'm going to label it as such. It is the whole, okay? No matter how I divide it, when I put them together, it is a whole once I put them all together. Now, how could I divide this into three equal parts? Hmm, this is very tricky. Think about, our, think about when we are doing our um, T-charts, we have to sort something by three parts. We have to make sure that we make each column the same. So take a peek right here. 
oops, you can see my hole through my lines, go through my paper. Let me trace those so you can see them. Okay, what do you notice? Three smaller rectangles. They are the same size. Do we know they're the same size yet? Let's try it out. Go ahead and take one of your rectangles, either one of your pieces of paper at home or one of your rectangles that you have in front of you in our classroom, and I want you to fold it. it so that we can really prove it just like we did with our halves yesterday and what do you notice when you are ready to share put your thumb in front of your tummy see what do you notice my three parts when I stack them on top of each other what do you notice did you notice the same thing about yours okay how about you not quite close so when you are gonna go back and divide them when you're folding them one thing you can do and you can do it when you fold it the other way too is you can fold it inside of each other almost make like a little taco and do a little half fold. It's kind of tricky, but you don't push it down as hard. You don't crease it. And then you can fold the other one over and have it match up. And when you fold the other one to match it up, then you can crease them. And it might make it a little bit easier. Okay. Kind of line them up just right. And then when they fold in, it'll kind of like a little taco or a little enchilada. Okay. Can we think of another way we can fold those? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can we think of another way we can fold those while I'm taping this up? Okay. How else can we show three equal parts? Ooh, I'm seeing some another way coming out. you have that one too some friends are some friends are using their pencils first and then are trying to fold them and they're using those pencils to kind of guide them we can always erase a pencil can't we it's hard to erase a fold <laughs> okay what way do you have oh can you see it out there friends Trace it with my black maca so you can see it just a little bit easier. Is that different than this one? Can we prove that they're equal parts? Let's try it. And then we're going to name those parts when we're done. Are they on top of each other? Ta-da! Are they the same size? They are. Oh, okay. Let's tape them up, huh? And you're going to tuck them into yours too, right? And hold them on for future reference. We have little Ziploc baggies at school for these. If you want to at home get a little Ziploc bag, that might be helpful so you can hold on to them because we're going to need them for other lessons too. Being a little tricky today, huh? Okay. Is there any other way we can show three equal parts of a whole? There's that rectangle again. We put them together and what does it make? 
a whole. So we have part one, part two, part three, and they go together to make one whole. Very nice. Can I show you a couple that I have? And I want you to I want you to tell me if they are, if they will make, um, if they're divided into three equal parts or not. Are you ready? This one's kind of tricky. Okay. you think equal parts one two three there's three parts are they equal some say yes some say no shall we try it out cutting on my lines let's see These two are the same. Check that out. Well, got to turn them and flip them and all that good stuff. These are the same, but are they the same as this one? Mm. Mm. They're not quite, are they? So are the, is this one divided into thirds? Not this one that I did. So if we were gonna put that one on here, would it get a green check or would it get a red X? Mm. Wah, wah. Nope. We got our green check here. And we got our green check here. But we got our red X right here. What about this one? What do you think? Equal, not equal. Some say these two are the same. What with this guy? Should we try it out? Let's prove it. I love when we can cut and with when we can when we can fold and cut these because it helps us really be able to prove it so much easier. Okay. Look at these. They're about the same. I probably could have made them pretty close if I would have spent more time drawing them. But, mm, mm, I'm thinking that even if I were to cut this up and chop suey it into smaller parts, it would not leave off a little bit of thingy in the bottom. But there's still this big chunk left over. So I'm thinking, no, I agree. I'm seeing some wiggle waggles. That's a red X, isn't it? What have we forgotten about? I just heard somebody say, but what about our circles? Let's check out our circle. Can you all find your circle for me? Find your circle that you cut out at the beginning of our time today. Whoa, la, la, la. How do we divide this into equal parts? Oh. This is where it gets really tricky when we're dividing it into three equal parts. Can I give you a fancy word for three equal parts? When we had our two equal parts, they were called halves. I also say halves, halves, okay? Those two equal parts were called halves. Each one is a half, so they're two halves, okay? Now, our three is, just as simple as a word, okay? We're gonna do this one in blue, and we're going to call those thirds. Everybody say thirds. Thirds, yes. Oh, look, looks a lot like three, doesn't it? Three thirds. Here's a third, here's a third, here's a third, and those three thirds makes a whole. Same thing here. Each of these is a third when they're divided into three equal parts. This is not a third, is it? It's not equal. Are these thirds? No, they're not, are they? 
That trick with the thirds, in order for it to be a third, it has to be three equal parts, okay? There has to be one of those three equal parts. So I'm gonna draw some of our circles and I want you to tell me if you think it's divided equally. Are you ready? Do what we did with our rectangle, right? What do you think? Thirds divided into three equal parts? Over here says, no way, Jose. Why not? That one in the middle is nice and big. Those are small, aren't they? Yeah. That's not divided into thirds. Can I actually show you how we divide up? Yeah. I know that you guys have probably seen something like this before. But I just heard, ooh, it looks like a, kind of like a pie. Yes. So in order for us to make a pie... We have to do a couple of cool things here. One, we're gonna take our circle and we're gonna find the middle of it the best we can, okay? And that middle, we're just gonna make a little dot in that middle, okay? Everybody see my middle? Now, we're going to start in the middle of the top and we're gonna draw a line down to that middle spot. Everybody see that? I know the pencil because I need to be able to erase sometimes. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to find that middle of another spot. And I make it like a pie. Now it's not probably perfect, but it's close. In fact, as I look at that, this one looks a little bit bigger than this one and this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this and make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna move, none of my pencils have good erasers on them. I'm glad your guys' do. Move this one a little bit more this way. So you kinda gotta play with it. And you kinda gotta eyeball it. That means you wanna take a peek with your, with your eyes and see if they're about equal. Because that's the trick, it has to be equal. And then once I feel like it's as close to equal as possible, I'm gonna trace it with my black marker. Now you guys don't need to trace it with your black marker. You might even want to cut it. This is a tricky way. So you gotta eyeball it a little bit. You can tell these are not the same size. They're not the same shape. And we know that they have to be the same shape when they're, in, when they're trying to make a hole, right? Well, I cut on my lines and then I fold them up or I line them up. I have about the same shape. Okay? So, the trick is with our thirds is to try to put them together and to divide them into three equal pieces. I could have even done, gotten a little bit closer. Mine were not perfect. Okay? You're finding the middle, and you're getting as close as you can to make them as equal as possible because that's what you have to have when you have a circle that's divided into thirds, okay? They have to be in three equal parts. Okie dokie. That's tricky, isn't it? Absolutely. So when we take a peek at these thirds, you're gonna have a chance on your own to be dividing these shapes, these rectangles and these circles and partitioning them into three equal parts. And also looking at different examples that do or don't show two equal parts or three equal parts. So you're gonna have to be a judge just today and decide are there three equal parts or not three equal parts. Keep on dividing and always take a peek. They have to be equal. And today we're focusing on those thirds or those three equal parts. Head on off to your seats and check those rectangles and circles out.